What's up tankers, welcome to another Armor Warfare review and gameplay video. Today's video we're gonna talk about the Russian tier 10 MBT, the T14 Armata. It's called Titan because of the skin that I got on it, but uh, it's just the T14 Armata. It is the newest addition to the long line of Russian MBT main battle tanks, bearing the name of the Armata Universal Platform that it's based upon. It was developed in 2010. It uh, boasts a number of significant technological upgrades, not the least of which being an un unmanned turret, fitted with an automatically loaded long 125mm smoothbore cannon firing next generation ammunition, unique ERA set and an armored crew component. It was first seen during the 2015 Moscow Victory Day Parade and the army starting testing this vehicle since September 2016. The Armata caused quite a stir with its appearance being the first truly original armor platform in decades and the first one not having its roots in one of the Soviet era MBTs. <coughs> In 2015, Russia announced that there would be thousands of Armata in service by 2020, which sparked a development frenzy both in the West and in China, as all potential opponents thought that this means this is a means to defeat this upcoming up, sought the means to defeat this upcoming super tank. Now. Uh, <coughs> Unfortunately, the Armata program was plagued by serious issues ranging from the need to import a number of Armata's essential components to the lack of a production ready engine. The producer that the Chaka engine that was intended for the, this platform effectively went bankrupt and the worst problem however was the lack of a proper assembly line. By early 2020, all existing Armata prototypes were even more or less handcrafted with the construction facilities. By far the most expensive part of the tank developed, hopelessly being behind schedule. The first Armata are currently scheduled to enter real service in 2023, although this deadline is likely to see even more extensions due to these problems that I mentioned. Now in game, this tank is like, it's, it's one of the, it's the newest tank in the world, in the Russian military and in the world's military, I think, yes. But however, in game, this uh, tank has suffered a lot of nerfs and it became one of the worst tanks in the game, in my opinion, and in my uh, experience with the game and with this tank. It's a main battle tank, it's armor, the vehicle's armor can withstand a lot of punishment, at least it's supposed to do, although uh, the armor is in, in the game is not really that good. The lower plate is like, as you can see, all green here. Overall thickness is 450 millimeters, so yeah, you can pen it with even with a 450 millimeters gun. Not, and I won't mention about being attacked by ADGMs or from the T15 Armata. Thermobarics, where is it? ATGM, yeah. It can even damage the, the turret. The lower plate is all green. So yeah, the armor is really not that consistent unless you find the real uh, Hold down position and maybe you can withstand the AP shots that were supposed to pen your lower plate but then the enemy will immediately switch to AG and start uh, chewing your HP little by little especially that this tank comes with a maximum of 300 and 600 3, 3k.600 hit points so it's not that uh, it's not that the uh, MBT that was supposed to take a lot of shots and uh, trade shots for uh, your uh, high HP pool. 
your HP, HP pool is low, so yeah, and you don't have that much to trade with. Uh, the reload time, actually, the gun, in fact, is quite good. I mean, like, the penetration is decent. Uh, it can get, so it's like what, 850, yeah, 840 millimeters. The dam alpha damage is 700. And this, this, if this is the T14 Armata version, unless you play the 140 one, which can, which has, which has 1k alpha, that one, that Armata is like the better version of this tank. But uh, we are talking about progression vehicles here. That one is a premium tank, and this one is a progression vehicles. So yeah, the damage per minute is like 6.6k. Uh, per minute which is quite moderate for compared to other MBTs but uh, this is the only decent I mean like the highest uh, um, the highest uh, value that this tank can have over that over other tanks and which is not that really great it's just quite decent other than that the defense the hit points is not that high the mobility is slow it's, it's a slow tank it can reach yes, eight, 80 kilometers an hour, but that's it's, rough, it's not on a rough terrain, it's just, it's just on a city maps or smooth terrain like roads and paved roads and stuff like this. The acceleration, yes, is like uh, 0 to 32 kilometers an hour is almost 5 seconds. Again, it's a very slow acceleration. Hull traverse is 32 degrees, which is again not that good. It's like almost uh, yeah let's say decent hull traverse but uh, also i would rather call it slow the camo is 22 percent which is one of the highest values on the mbts on the tier 10 mbts but it's you don't have sure you don't have that uh, mm, you don't you don't need camo on the mbts not even if you're sniping because of as soon as you get on the move you will lose all that camo and get to zero percent with mbts your role is on the move you cannot afford to snipe when there are many opponents with mbts that can push the line and uh, you cannot snipe to counter attack their advance so yeah camo is uh, rather a useless talking here the accuracy is uh, 0 0.95 degrees which is less than 100 so yeah it is good but that is with all these retrofits that can boost my accuracy so the improved barrel lining for the reload and accuracy and the ai targeting system with the aim speed and boost to accuracy again and of course with the muzzle reference system which can adjust my accuracy again with my by 10 percent which is quite a big difference so yeah, three retrofits in one tank for just to bring the accuracy just below 100. So yeah, that's quite a lot. And uh, that, so that, as you can see, it's not one of the most accurate tanks. You struggle to get it to less than 100. The end time is pretty good, 1.5 seconds. Turret traverse again, decent, not that, not that fast, not that slow, 42 degrees. And I also use for a retrofit the survivability kit, so I get uh, less ramming damage and more less damage to the crew because I mm, uh, I don't know how I just I don't know I just played it with Rachel so yeah I guess I just want not for the ramming damage because this tank is not that uh, fast so you can go and ram targets in your way. So, but on the contrary, I just used it so I don't get that much of a ramming damage because of the low hit points. So everybody when will see me and go for a ram because I have low HP, I have less hit points, I have little hit points to spare with. So everyone will rush to the rams for the ram. So I get less ramming damage and punish the enemy with more ramming damage to them instead of me. I also use for the crew the track and wheel repair speed. I don't know, maybe when I try to hold down or side scrape, well, I enemy tends to shoot the track, so yeah, I get the track and wheel repair speed, but I guess I'm gonna switch it 
do some acceleration in off-road terrain. So yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna do it right now actually. And the battering ram. Okay, maybe I should have gone for the spinning so I get more hold rovers, but I guess not. And for the gunner, it's aim speed and max spread because Again, not one of the most accurate tanks in the game. And aim speed because, yes, why not? From 1.7 seconds to 1.5 seconds, it's a little difference, a considerable difference for aiming speed. Uh, this tank also comes with the special ability Supercharge Harkil APS, which is, uh, let's say, like a like a like a seat belt to this tank because sometimes yes it's a lifesaver sometimes uh, it can help you a lot when you are surrounded and you want to retreat also this tank doesn't have that re that reverse speed to go into retreat uh, uh, into retreat maneuvers so yeah the super hard kill APS maybe it can help you too. Uh, save some trading shots, maybe one or two, and uh, save your HP. So yeah, basically I, I would say it just adds like 1k HP to your tank because it will interrupt all AP projectiles and heat projectiles and heat projectiles and uh, it... Uh, yeah, again, it can be a lifesaver. You all know how the supercharged hard kill APS works. And also, what because of the lack of speed, you cannot. I would rather rely on this special ability to cross, make uh, to yeah, to cross uh, some dangerous uh, positions like crossfires and something to cross it to some safer position. But this tank again, only 80 kilometers per hour, which you rarely reach it, so you basically move like 40 or maybe 50 kilometers per hour. So, yeah, that's not enough. There is not enough time to cross before the supercharged hill APS um, runs out because its duration is like 10 seconds. So yeah, not enough time. But again, 10 seconds is like two reload time of an enemy, enemy MBT or enemy TD. So or, or enemy TD is like maybe three shots or light tanks. So yeah, it can be a lightsaber sometimes. But uh, again, the downside is that if the enemy gets very close to you, that supercharged. APS doesn't intercept shots anymore, so yeah. But again, it's here. It's good to have it. It's a bonus to this uh, to this tank. Now, in terms of upgrades, I started differently in this video. You get do you get to the Mara Shishkin line? You get these tanks to the Mara Shishkin, Mara Shishkin line. <laughs> the whole line is Russian tanks. This yeah, okay, this one. Uh, the line starts to shine like from tier 5 this is very good this is very very good one of the I think one of the best tier 6 main BTs tier 70 now we start to down downgrade on the tanks this is like hmm, quite bad actually I would say I mean it's not bad it's decent but compared to other tier 7 MBTs that are shining it's uh, really bad it's, uh, yeah it, it's no it's simply no competition to other Leclerc's or whatever types or K1A1 or something like this. I mean a Sabra or an M60 with shit armor can uh, like uh, out DPM you quite fast. So yeah, it's not that, uh, and it doesn't even have gun depression. So yeah, I guess like the only ones in this line are tier six and the tier nine one with a T90 MS, which is really good. T90 MS, I, could, I would say it's very good because uh, it's not that good like I would rather I would call it the tier 10 one, but compared to the tier 10 Armata, I think the T90 MS is like, um, like fairly equal. Like if you put a T90 MS, it has 50-50% uh, chance to kill an Armata. So yeah, this one is like as good as a tier one, tier 10 one. This one is not that good. Again, same as the tier seven. There are other tier eight tanks with Chaochan, Merkavas, and stuff like that. So yeah, the line is pretty straightforward, all MBTs or Russian MBTs. In terms of upgrades, uh, yeah, you get the smoke grenades, the launchers uh, with uh, 10 seconds duration, uh, cooldown, A charges, the spoil liner, which increases the, your super trash hit points by 400, 
armor crew component damage to the crew is reduced by 50%. So yeah, I should either, for, because I forgot about this, I should rather uh, give up this med kit and just put like synthetic oil or something like this to get more speed and even more hull traverse and uh, max speed. So I even, so I have this one 37% and even with uh, my armor crew percent so it goes like up to 87 percent so yeah my crew is rather very protected unless i find i fight a sabrina fish challenger so it can ruin up my crew in one shot but that's very situational that's a very rare situation so yeah i guess i made a good decision now another upgrade aiming time reduced by 20 percent so yeah it was like 22 seconds then i downgraded it to 1.7 seconds and now it's 1.5 seconds the ammunition the, am the heat are very strong 1k penetration 1000 penetration with an average alpha damage of 875 sometimes it can reach 1k damage so you can see those 1k's uh, 1k heat shots alpha damage heat shots you get also an ITGM which I would rather not use it it's quite you don't have the there, there are no really good situation where you can use it. So if you want to finish one shots opponents, you have the uh, HE shots, which are rather, which is, ve which are very good. Uh, you can also pen with them. Uh, the rear of the tanks for like 1k plus damage, as you will see in my next gameplay video. Uh, the improved autoloader with a 7% increased rate of fire and the uh, upgrade to the AP shots, the improved gunner optics, the much needed one, <coughs> which increases my accuracy by 10%, improved cooling system, camouflage increased, and enemy thermostat, which is rather trash for an MBT, I don't know why is it in the game, this tank is not supposed to snipe, it doesn't even have that much of accuracy to snipe, so there is no justifications for this stupid trash, upgrades this tank, I repeat this tank, this really needs a, a buff from the developers, it was left behind, it was supposed to be a good tank, but I don't know. Movement speed in off-road race is created by 20%, so yeah, and the universal retrofit for the force one. Now in terms of uh, the special abilities, I would recommend staying with uh, supercharged GPS, it's the best thing you can get on this tank, rapid fire is quite trash, it just increases you the like one ten, uh, like 0 0.5 seconds reload time but with a huge downgrade and uh, downgrade to the aiming speed and that's you don't want this and this is the speed boost which again on this tank with this with this armor you don't need that much of a speed you will get shot from you will get shot like i mean if, if this tank has like strong ERA on the sides, yeah, I would say I would give up the supercharged APS and go for the speed because I will get shots in the side when my ERA will, ERA my will protect me, but this tank doesn't have that shit, so yeah, it's just a cage in the rear which protects you, let's say, from the HE shots. There also, there is quite a spot here which you can pen with the HE. Other than that, everyone can pen you with heat in the side. So yeah, everybody just mocks this tank when it sees it. It can out, you can outmaneuver it. So yeah, but uh, <coughs> I heard that there will be. I heard some rumors. I don't know if they're true, but I heard that developers will again take the time to buff this tank to add some ERA on the side. The most needed ERA to make it stronger, like the one on XM, XM one A three, which has very strong ERA on the sides, even on the turret. And yes, the most, uh, the very good part of this tank is that it has an unmanned turret. So yeah, if you're in a hold down position, you can afford to take some side shots and um, turn your turret to face other enemies while they are shooting you from the front. So you get like minimum damage on the turret. Yeah, it is worth. But again, it has low HP. So yeah, everything I say, it's contradictory because this tank is quite controversial. So yeah, without further ado, let's test it in the gameplay. Uh, yeah, let's go and uh, we will discuss some other opinions there. So the gameplay operation Ghost Hunter. I play with my Marat Shishkin Russians companions T90 MS comrades. Two T90 MS is one M-Star Russian 
RT and uh, AS21, the Korean AV. We go straight to the cap. Go, but I pause to into this uh, hold, a little hold down position because I know there's gonna be an ambush here. I played this map before, and uh, I managed to put one into the hunter with a with heat low roll one eight hundred. Another roll in 797 and one high roll 914. Where though I want to go like tilted down here because I know the hunter was supposed to reload his two rockets and I don't want to get shot by his nasty ATGMs that deal 1k damage per ATGM. Yeah, I go in to the cap to protect it. The pin that is coming, I put one hit into him, another roll or low roll, 849. I mean, it's not a roll or low roll, it's like it's average. But uh, yeah, the 1k is one you rarely get. Uh, 1k alphas, you get uh, them very rarely. Maybe you should try Cortez if you like to see big numbers. But there will be big numbers um, into the next cap because I will troll some people with a G. The K21 turret is. Uh, I immediately see this hunter. I put the handbrake because he has like his uh, two uh, two rockets, like his consecutive rockets that can one first one will destroy my APS and the other one will do 1k damage. So I didn't want to go into the second cap with 1k less damage. I turn around now. To help the T9 GMS, who is already in some kind of trouble with two lieutenants there, and uh, I immediately go to help him with a slight delay because of the hunter that was in my rear earlier. Uh, I see the 640. I'm in a kind of a crossfire, but I see the 640 is like I don't know. I think he was stuck there, uh, but now he's climbing up. I see him. <coughs> I try to get. I use that Sam truck as a cover and this D14 Armata is also here uh, in almost face hugging me but he was tracked and I go uh, I immediately and I went to put the side shot into him and managed to kill him I immediately activate my supercharged APS because I saw the spawn was not very generous the crab was in my right starting to already hit it before with, a, with a, an ATGM I immediately switched to HE to um, shoot him and finish him off, one shot for him. I see the uh, DMP, which is also vulnerable to heal in his upper plate. His, uh, you can take a lot of HE shots into him in his upper plate and he will deal like 1k damage. You can even do that with tier 8 one, tier 8 tanks. And this T14 Armata Lieutenant is again going into this narrow road, narrow passage. But uh, he was he lost a lot of time turning his hull. Now I mean I see this K21. I immediately switch to HE, shoot him in the turret. Amorak, poof, explosion, 1.2k damage. Sphinx, I have the HE loaded for him as well, 1.1k. I finished this his, him as well with one shot. And now a bit of a problem. Houston, we have a problem here. We have an Armata. In uh, 114 Armada actually, which is the <coughs> larger cannon variant of my tank. And the 490, which I didn't see because the 90 ms was in that hangar and he didn't spot him. And now I'm in a bit of a problem. I took already took 1k damage from the 490, but I managed to bounce two shots from the 152 Armada. And uh, the object 490 also bounced me on the last shot. I see him now, I managed to go behind these hangars as well to get in a cover, I don't want to get shot by an Abu for another 1k from him I, mean, I see him turning around, I switch to heat, I put the one hit into his rear and one more I guess because he doesn't see me now because of the smoke so I managed to Amorak him and he explodes, another lucky explosion because I managed to finish him off and save the T90MS for being shot for another one. Okay, I see the Altai here, he's with his rear to, towards me, and I immediately switch to HE, 950 damage, one shot. He's still not turning around, another 1.1k, I take down his engine with his tracks, 
and I managed to fire him only with the HE and managed to do 3k damage from 3 shots into him. The M starts shooting him, the heart is shooting him, and the uh, T90 MS finishes him off. I see the T90, I see the Anders and uh, the T Type 92, 990A2. I want to get close to them, but I managed to block myself into the rock and, and uh, tanks. But I put smokes and try to make my clear my way up and near up near to them near to them because I have Rachel Kramer as a commander and uh, I if I am near my enemies will get some reload boosts and as you can see my reloads dropped from like seven seconds to five ninety one seconds yeah so one second boost as a reload time now we are uh, I'm seeing this uh, side almost angled a bit with his rear over the type 99A2 and managed to put one hit into his engine. I am having a lot of fun with this uh, HE shots into the rear of the, these bots. I see the T90MS that was near me and I let him finish the type 99A2. I slowly try to get to the next gap but I see a Bradley who is already spamming his ATGMs. I knew he fired all his ADGM, so I managed to charge forward with my fragile T14 Armata. I'm 1k, I'm on 1k HP left, and uh, fought some nice battles with the 490s lieutenants and the 152 Armata's lieutenants. Those nasty beasts that can uh, wreck 1.1k from one shot in, from my low HP pool. So yeah, trying to make my way to the next cap, T90MS is on the, from the mid, going to the middle road and I'm going through the side road. I want to spot some enemies on my way, so I can see what we, can we expect to this cap. I take down these fences and these walls. I put one HP shot into the late lurk. I see the AMX, I finish him off with 89%. RT, RT, RT M started hit, hit hard. And now we're taking care of the enemies who are capping, who are rushing the cap, like bots. The VT4 is facing us, he's heading, looking our way. He can pen me as well with, uh, uh, with his AP shots in my lower plate. My lower plate, as we discussed, is very... It's very... Uh, not that thick. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I ran out of ammo. I wanted to get greedy and uh, switch to HE, but in, uh, by the time I switched to HE, someone snatched my K21 kill from me. I see this Bradley as well. I tried to hit him with HE, but there was no green uh, spot to pen him. So I switched to hit and managed to finish him off. Now for the 14th, 15th kill, I need one more to get the destroyer medal. We have a pin dot in our back. I managed to miss him. I don't know where that shot went. I guess that went through his uh, tracks, but there was no track damage. I guess that was like a server lag or something, but I don't know why that shot didn't even make impact. And I see the T90MS who is going to get take care of the pin dot. So my arse is protected. Uh, there is a hunter on the cap and an AS21, I see that uh, AS21 turret, I can hit it and pen it with heat, so I managed to get my destroyer medal, 15 kills, and now I think that the cap is safe, we can go and hang around, explore the outside skirts, <laughs> and see what other stuck bots are left, and manage to take them out. T90 MS does that as well. Uh, does that as well. And uh, I think there was like a hunter or something. No, was not or also Mark. And I pen him with HE. I switched to HE and I pen him for like 950 damage. So we defended the cap. We successfully and gloriously defended the cap. The operation is over. Nice play also by my teammates, the T90MS did a great job, especially that one that took the second cap and uh, managed to protect it. 
uh, he stood, uh, he dealed uh, very good in a situation where he was surrounded by like two ugly tier 10 lieutenants. So yeah, that's the game, 37k damage with, with a lot of progress in some raid missions, that was uh, the current raid mission with the vanguard skins. Uh, yeah, target medal, destroyer medal and blue star and uh, yeah, 5 enemies spotted, 15 enemies destroyed. So yeah, in conclusion I would rather classify this tank to the bottom. It's the one of the bad tanks in the game. I don't know, it should get a buff again, I repeat. This tank should be the Russian pride. So, especially because it's one of the newest tank in the world uh, right now, 2021, almost 2022. But in game, yes, everybody when see, everybody when it's seeing an Armata on the battlefield, the first in instinct is to rush him because it is very slow, it has uh, slow, poor maneuvering, poor hit points, poor armor, so everybody can troll this tank a lot. But I hope that in the future this, uh, the developers will take the time and buff this tank and uh, make it at least a decent tank because it deserves to be that. It's uh, the Russian, uh, again the Russian uh, uh, line from the Mara Chishkin it's quite enjoyable to play even in PvP, even in PvE so yeah, it should be a pity not to flavor the tier 10 reward progression vehicles T14 Armata thank you all for watching and I will see you on the next one